I think the problem we face is that it's a very complicated uh, process leading to global average temperatures. And uh, to measure the anomaly on these small amounts and then to try and pro proclaim uh, doom and gloom over the long term is oversimplifying the challenge. Um, I don't know, for example, how much of the stability over the last decade has to do with the huge amount of aerosols being generated in the newly industrialized Far East and uh, all the other related stuff that can um, affect the signal um, on a year-to-year -year basis when many processes uh, do affect it on a decadal and century length. And um, uh, as Richard uh, and I have both said in the past, um, uh, sometimes uh, in the zeal to grab uh, people's attentions, some of these more complicated processes are glossed over. And that's certainly uh, been part of the nature of the communication to the general public. Uh, about which I'm perhaps not as happy as I could be because I do think there is public policy to be initiated but not perhaps uh, using the kind of evidence that uh, the NASA clip you just used would rely on. But do you accept Richard's position that you know, little can in fact be discerned from the fact that this is the, the hottest decade on record and he certainly sounds much less perturbed about that than most of the climate change scientists who say we're going to hell in a handcart are saying? Well, I mean, the question is whether uh, the hottest decade on record um, is a harbinger of hotter decades in the future. And what Richard is saying is that, uh, if I don't misunderstand him, is that uh, there is, you know, the, our predictive ability depends on our ability to be able to discern the anthropogenic processes and the natural processes. And if the natural processes have the upper hand, then most of what we plan in the normal course of policy uh, would not be very effective. 